you know, teams, there, there are certain teams out there that seem to go through this uh, season, they seem to win a lot. Or there are certain athletes that seem to win in their sport a lot. They seem to excel. And there's uh, certain people that seem to excel at work. And, and there's been a lot of research done on these kind of people. And it's, it's been concluded that there are a lot of things that they have in common. There are a lot of things that they do that, uh, that maybe we don't do. And there are certain things they don't do that maybe we find ourselves doing. So uh, this is called the winner's code. It's, a, it's like a code of ethics, some of it's subconscious, some of it's conscious, but it's a behavior, it's a lifestyle that they live that helps them to succeed either at sports or to succeed at work. And so uh, what, what we're going to do for the next several weeks is just talk about this winner's code and maybe explore some of these things that are found there and see if maybe we can apply them to our lives. We're not going to have some kind of all-inclusive list, but a, a number of these things you'll find can be really, really helpful to you. Because the bottom line is everybody likes to win. Is that, is that a fair statement? Does anybody go out on the field wishing they would lose? <laughs> no, you know. Does anybody go to work wishing they'd have a bad day? No, we want to win. We all want to win. But there's a problem here, and that is especially in the sporting world, only one athlete in a one-on-one -on -one competition can walk away a winner, right? If it's wrestling, if it's tennis, uh, only one person walks away a winner. If you have a team competition, only one team walks away a winner. All the rest tried their best, but they go home not having accomplished their goals. They didn't win. But what is unique about the kingdom of God, and this is why it's called the kingdom of God, it's another system. This is another system. In the kingdom of God, every follower of Christ can be a winner, can win the championship, can take home the trophy, can have the gold medal put around their neck. It's not a fake. It's not God just trying to accommodate us because we, we're, we're going to get depressed. It's the kingdom of God's system. And so what we want to look at is how can we be winners in the kingdom of God. And so we're going to start this morning in uh, Hebrews chapter 12. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 12. We're just going to read this morning a couple of verses, spend some time on uh, some of them this morning. Next couple of weeks, spend some more time. But this is really a fantastic section in, in the Bible about living a life that's victorious. So in chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. So uh, the writer here is uh, giving us some insight as to what I would call some of the, uh, what is inside the winner's code. And there's a couple of things that he mentions here. And starting right out in verse 1, it says, Since we're surrounded by so, cr so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight. So what he's talking about, there are some things you have to set aside, let go of, in order for you to rise up. There are some things that are holding us back that we have to recognize and, and be honest about and say, this is hindering me. Uh, sometimes that may require sacrificial living, but the fact is we have to take a moment and recognize this. And what, what he's really talking about here is there are, there, this is part of what I would call the winner's code. They understand that they have to give up in order to go up. It, it doesn't come free. It doesn't come cheap. There are some things that you have to deal with, and especially world-class athletes, people who are performing at a very high level. They, they have understood this idea that there's things they have to give up in order for them to go up. So in other words, while people are sitting around munching on potato chips and, and drinking pop, they're munching on health food and veggies. You know, while some people are laying on the couch watching t sports on TV and kind of living through the sports on TV, they're at the gym working out. Uh, instead of uh, wasting their free time, they're giving up their free time so that they can go up. So it's this, this idea that if we want to walk with the winners, we want to learn what part of their code is, we have to understand that sacrifices are part of this living. And here he's telling us, be encouraged, the very first part. He says, look, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the first thing he's trying to tell us here is that 
look at all these people listed in chapter 12. He lists them off. Abraham and Isaac and Joseph and David and Jacob and King, you know, the king, all these people, these prophets, these judges. He lists them off, men and women, people who did fantastic things for God. And he's telling you, since we're surrounded by such a great a cloud of witness, let this be an encouragement to you. Sometimes people read chapter 12, uh, chapter 11, about all these great people, and they think, oh, man, they're awesome people, but I can never do that. That's not why chapter 11 is written, and that's not why he introduces chapter 12. Why he lists chapter 11 and goes into chapter 12, he's saying, look, these people did it, so can you. These were average people who performed at a very high level and made it into what chapter 11 is often called the hall of God, God's hall of fame. So that he's saying, don't be discouraged. You can perform at a high level. You can accomplish great things for God. It's not that only a select few are chosen by God to do this. Therefore, since you're surrounded, all these people, he said, look around. There are people who are doing this. They're not special people. They've learned certain things, and they're walking in them. And the one thing they have learned is they've learned to lay aside things that are hindering them. So, so what, what this is bringing out is this is a difference between the world system and God's system because in the world system, you have to be the best to get the trophy. You have, to, you have to not only do your best, but you have to be the best. I mean, you know, there's plenty of stories of people whose names we don't know who, who did their best, but since they weren't the best, they didn't win the championship. Or since they weren't the best, they didn't get that multi-million dollar contract. They just faded off into oblivion. But here, these people are not the best. These are people who did their best used what gifts and talents God had them, and in chapter 11, they made it into the Hall of Fame. And he's telling you, look, in chapter 12, therefore, since you're surrounded by these people, you can do this. You can do this. You can make it into God's Hall of Fame. I think probably most of us don't believe that. You think, we think that's special just for the select few. This chapter, in chapter 11, is trying to tell you, you can be in God's Hall of Fame. You don't have to be the best, but you do have to learn how to walk and live to the best of your ability. So he tells you, you have to give things up. Lay aside every weight. So what, you know, what would he be talking about, laying aside every weight? What is, what is the reference here to weight? When I read this, I'm just reminded of when I was back in high school, at the beginning of every year of football season, in the summer, we would start training vigorously, and we we're supposed to be training year-round, but we would put on ankle weights, and uh, the heavier, the better, and then we would run around the track uh, you know, as, as much as we could. And the idea was the ankle weights were to build up our strength so that when the season came, obviously, we laid them aside. We, we took them off. We'd be foolish to try to play with those while you're in, in the game. So, so when I think of laying aside weights, I, I think sometimes maybe there's things that could have even been beneficial in our life at one time, but maybe are no longer beneficial. Maybe we need to take a look at things that, that we think you know, used to be a benefit to us, maybe our system of reading or the way we used to do things, the way we've served, the way we've gotten involved, maybe that was beneficial at a certain point, but is it possible now that, that God may be calling you to lay it aside? And, and here's the thing, it's not always a decision between good and evil that, that this passage is talking about. Lay aside every weight. It's not talking about stop doing bad things. The next part is talking about that, but this part is saying that it's not always between good and evil. It's not always black and white. Paul talked about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 when he said, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. This is a passage you have to get grapple with and begin to understand. This is, this is maturity in Christ when you begin to understand, yes, it may be lawful, but it's not really what is the best? It's, it's learning how to choose what's great over what's good. This is, this is a lifestyle that winners, this part of the winner's code. It's not just, well, that'll do, but is this going to help me advance in my relationship with God? Is this what God has for me? While other people may be able to indulge in it, and we don't have the right to tell them they cannot. Not necessarily that it's right or wrong, but it's, is that right for you? This is becoming personal responsible for your own life and beginning to understand if I want to become part of this chapter 11, this list of names of average people who excelled above and beyond and, and I want to be a part, I have to learn sometimes I've got to give up to go up. 
I've got to let things go that may not be necessarily wrong or evil. Maybe other people can experience them and indulge in them, but in my life right now, I need to let that go. And if I learn that, that is truly part of the winner's code. They understand this and they're willing to do it. They're willing to make that sacrifice because they see the benefit. The second part of this is, he says, and not only lay aside every weight, but he says here, lay aside every sin which easily ensnares us. So this is the second part of what we might refer to as the winner's code. First, they lay aside things that would be good, so that they can choose something that's better, choosing the great over the good. But this one is talking about playing by the rules. This is talking about not cheating. So, you know, you hear all the time in sporting events of people who break the rules. I mean, there was a story years back about Marion Jones. I don't know if any of you remembered her, but she's the first lady to ever win five medals in the Olympics. She won three golds and two bronze. Powerful athlete. Well, come to find out, she broke the rules. She was using steroids. And then more recently, we, we still hear bits and pieces from Lance Armstrong, the man who won seven Tour de France races in a row. Seven. I mean, that's a Superman. That is truly a Superman. Oh, but we just found out, you know, happened to find out, and they knew for years, but finally it comes out. He cheated. He didn't play by the rules. Well, here's, here's how this applies to us. Sin is breaking the rules. That's what he's talking about here. Don't break the rules. You want to join up with this crowd that's listed in chapter 11? Don't break the rules. Let aside, let, lay aside that sin that so easily ensnares us. You don't have to give in to that. You don't have to give in to sin. I mean, we have been redeemed. At some point in your life, you have to grapple with this and say, I am a new person. I know sin exists, but I do not have to give in to it. I can let it go. I can release it. Because sin is cheating. And, and God has given us rules for this game of life. There are rules just like in athletic competition. There are rules. You have to obey the rules if you want to compete. If you break the rules, then sooner or later you get caught. Sometimes athletes think they can get away with, you know, some kind of new drug and they use it for a period of time and then they get caught and it's a big scandal. It's, it's a non, you know, it's a repetitive cycle. But it's similar when we deal with sin. You, you may get away with it for a while, and, and even though, like, people who break the rules, they get away with it for a while. I mean, Lance Armstrong was getting, like, half of a million dollars every time he won the Tour de France and celebrity fame and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But sooner or later, the Bible tells us your sin's going to find you out. And then it's the crash. And then everything's ruined. So, so we have to be determined as part of the winner's code. I want to win in life. I have to be determined. I'm not going to break the rules. That's not part of my... That's not part of my vocabulary. I'm not going to be doing that. I may be tempted to, and there may be pleasure in breaking the rules, and you may get away with it for a while, but a day is coming where everyone's going to be held accountable. And people who think they can cheat, the Bible tells us there's a day every man will stand before God. And if people think they can cheat and get into heaven by some other method, they're breaking the rules. They're breaking the rules. They'll be held accountable. So, so there, here's just two simple things here. He says, look... If you want to join the cloud of witnesses, which you can do, which you can do, that's why it's listed here. Then he said, learn to lay aside every weight. Let, let, let go of some things that may be okay for somebody else, but maybe not for you. And don't break the rules. Play by the rules. Now, I, I, I believe, and I think we all would agree with this, I think we're all created with tremendous potential. You know, we all have great gifts and talents. And, and you ever wonder what holds people back from a attaining their potential, I, I think it's called, really simply, your if only. Your if only. You think, what, what is an if only? Well, an if only would be something like this. You know, Mary would be such a great friend if only she didn't talk so much. You know, John would be such a great person to hang out with if only he would use breath mints or take a shower or, you know, dress a little bit, you know, Joe would be such a great drummer or a great guitar player if only he didn't play so loud. See, I think the fact is all of us have these if onlys in our lives. And more than likely, we're not even aware of them. What's crazy about the if only is that 
Everyone else sees it, but we don't. I mean, we are totally blind to our if-onlys. And maybe it's an if-only singular, could be if-onlys plural. Or if we do see it, maybe we minimize it. We think it's not really holding us back. But in fact, those if-onlys can really hold you back. And I believe that part of this laying aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us really develops in relationship. And, and you probably, the best way you're ever going to discover the if only or the if onlys in our lives is if you're in relationship and you have a healthy enough relationship where you can talk to people and every now and then ask them, you know, what's the if only in my life? What, 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 you know, what's something I can work on that I could get taken care of? And that's really being vulnerable. That's really challenging. It's, it's threatening. You know, you don't want it, You want them to say stuff like this. Nothing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, is there anything in my life that's kind of holding me back? And then they pull out a list. <laughs> you want the first ten? You know, ask your wife. She'll know, you know. But, but it's an if only. It is an if only. And an if only can really, really hold us back. And, and I believe God wants us to live a life that is blessed. Jesus said, I came to give you life and that more abundantly. That's the words of Jesus. However you want to define that, would it be fair to say that's good? <laughs> you know, that is good. He wants you to be blessed. But there are certain things that you see people doing that are probably helping that come to pass. And so in summary, I just want to say today, it is God's will it is God's will that you be in this list of God's Hall of Fame. It is God's will that the day of judgment, like Jesus talked about in Matthew 25 when he said he sits on the throne and people stand before him, it is God's will that on that day you get to be on the winner's platform and you get to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, now be faithful over many. And he puts that, you know, puts the trophy in your hand or puts the gold medal around your neck, you won. You won. Everyone in the kingdom of God can be a winner. But we have to learn. Sometimes there's, there's this idea of giving up to go up. Take a look at some things that might be holding you back and don't look at it in comparison to anybody else. Just look at it for yourself. Is this helping you? Is this holding you back? Is this consuming your time? You know, are you so busy you don't have time to read? Are, are you so busy you don't have time to serve? You know, are your finances so messed up that you don't have time to invest in the kingdom of God? Are, are you not taking time to build relationships? If there's things that are stealing from those, then you might want to say, maybe I'm going to take that out of my life. Maybe permanently, maybe for a season, but I'm going to take that out of my life. Lay aside every weight that so easily sets us back. And, and, and resist the sin which so easily ensnares us. Play by the rules. Don't, don't try to sneak by Obey the rules. They're meant for our benefit. The rules only enhance our lives. And then ask God if there could be someone in your life that might help you discover maybe one a year, and if only. I don't know how many you can handle, but you know, that someone could help you work on something and, and uh, you'll, you'll be part of that winner's circle. Let's close in prayer. God, I thank you that you want us to uh, to excel in our lives, God, to do the things that we read about in chapter 11 of Hebrews, people who went above and beyond and, and used the gifts and talents that you gave them and accomplished great things for you, God. And that, that's not listed there to discourage us. It's listed there so that we would remember they've gone before us. They've done it. We can do it. We're just like them. God, I pray as we're launching into this new year that we really take a look at some of the things that we're involved in and, and, and talk to you about it, God. If there are some things we have to give up in order to go up, then give us the wisdom and the strength to do it, God. If there's some sin that's holding us back, God, help us to walk in victory over it, God. And if there are some things, behaviors that are hindering us, our if-onlys, God, give us the opportunity to deal with them and, and change them. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are actively involved in this kind of stuff and that you're always working with us to give us that opportunity to be a part of what you're doing. We, we want to be a part of advancing your kingdom.
pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand. We'll take our offering at this time. The child of God, I'm your child. I am the child of God. Thank you, Jesus, that we are your sons and your daughters. Praise your name, Father. Praise your name. just emotion this is the spirit of God stirring in our hearts this is a uh, this is a, this is God I mean I can feel it there's just this energy like I want to jump over buildings I want to raise the dead I want to cast out devils I want to do some stuff this year you guys in on that, in on that? all right well let's let's do some of it this morning all right you good for that so let's have our prayer team up front here but but you know I talked with you last week I just feel like this is going to be a year of breakthrough. Some of you really need to address some of this stuff that's been haunting you. You know, a sickness that you just can't seem to shake or, you know, a relationship that's just been sick for so long. This year, let's, let's, let's believe God for a breakthrough. You know, financial situation, let's believe God for a breakthrough. I don't believe God wants us to walk through life just defeated and, and miserable and stuff. So, so this morning, I want to do something a little special. Uh, Bev, if you'd come up here, Bev, Beverly Williford has been dealing with some sickness that is really debilitating her. She's, uh, her heart's not beating right, and it's taken her out of ministry. She was helping us with the, uh, uh, the uh, free clinics, and she's struggling even to come to the School of Kingdom ministry class, and she's not even, I mean, it's just messing up her life. And I'm, I'm with you, Bev. I'm sick of it. I'm really tired of it. And, and uh, she, you know, she asked, could we pray for her this morning? I thought, well, why not, man? Let's jump on this and let's, let's get this heart beating right. Does that sound fair? So, so uh, where's Pastor Mark? Pastor Mark, Roxanne, why don't you come up here? And uh, we're going to pray for Bev this morning. But uh, I just want to, you know, we want to speak to the illness. Or, you know, sometimes when you pray for healing, we're talking to God. You know, God, please heal this person. But if you read the Gospels, you'll never see that. Jesus always spoke to the illness as though it was a person and told that illness to be gone or be healed. So that's what we're going to do here this morning. We're going to speak, all of us, you're going to extend your hands. We're going to pray for healing for Bev this morning. We're going to tell her heart to get in line and beat properly. All right? So, so now, Bev, before I pray, I just want you to know, I, I don't normally yell. I'm a pretty mellow guy. Except at sporting games. But, but uh, I, I, I may yell. Okay? Just giving you a heads up. So it's not hype here. I'm not messing around or anything. But, but you know what? Think about it. If this was your son or your daughter and you could stop it, wouldn't you, wouldn't you be a little more aggressive? I mean, come on. This is our sister in the Lord here. So she's being debilitated by this heart situation. It's wrecking her life. So extend your hands forward. Let's, let's just speak a blessing and healing into Bev's life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence right now. Just come, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Just relax, Bev. Just relax. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Just put your hand right there, Bev. In the name of Jesus, heart. Be right. Be healed in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. From this moment forward, no more messed up heartbeat. Be healed. Be made whole. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be whole, be properly, be healed in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Just come. Just let them come. Lift your arms up, Bev. Just take a deep breath in the name of Jesus. Just breathe it and breathe the healing power right now. Heart, beat regularly right now in the name of Jesus. Let's bless you. Yeah. This is good. It's just fun. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Body be made whole. Bev, begin to function properly. Do the ministries that God has set for you. Get out of bed. Do the things he's calling you to do. Body be made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. That's good. That's right. That's good. Just stay right there. Just speak it. We're going to close with our song. We're going to keep ministering to Bev and just speak healing into her life. But listen, if any of you need some prayer for healing, if any of you are ready for a breakthrough, you need some special prayer, come up and get some prayer. 
let's be aggressive. Let's be aggressive this year. Let's, let's, make, let's make the kingdom of God real in our lives. I, I truly believe the power of the Lord's here right now for healing bodies. If you've got some ongoing illness that has harassed you, come and get some prayer this morning. Let the Holy Spirit bring some healing into your body. All right? So we're going to close with a song. If you need prayer, come on up and get some prayer. God, you are my God, and I will never praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will never praise you. Oh God. Just commit this year to him as we sing this again. Oh God, you are my God. And I will never praise you. Oh God, you are my God. Be blessed. We love you. We'll see you back here next week.